coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 5th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. A brave and passionate moment yesterday in the House of Delegates. Delegate Megan Simonair supported and voted for a bill to ban conversion therapy in Maryland. Now, her father, State Senator Brian Simonair, opposed that bill and voted against it in the Senate last week. Prior to casting her vote, Delegate Megan Simonair took to the floor to tell the story of a girl who had to tell her parents that she was attracted to girls. Upon telling her parents that, they sought conversion therapy, although she was not subjected to it. And later, Simon Eyre confirmed that she indeed was the girl. Somewhat refuting her statement, Senator Brian Simon Eyre, her father, said that conversion therapy was never mentioned and it was just conversations had between an adult child and their parents. A very brave move on the part of Delegate Megan Simon Eyre, and perhaps a fairly significant misstep on the part of her father. Yesterday morning, Maryland State Police arrested Edward William Weekly of Arnold, Maryland, in his home and charged him with two counts of the distribution of child pornography and five counts of the possession of child pornography. In November of 17, Maryland State Police were doing an online investigation. The investigator downloaded child pornography, which was distributed via the Internet, and further investigation led to Weekly's residence in Arnold, Maryland. Some cautiously good news in Annapolis. Phil Davis of the Capitol has a report that Annapolis crime has seen a dramatic decline in the first months of 2018. Now, granted, we are only four months into 2018. However, the city has not seen any homicides. It has had less than half of the burglaries and has witnessed an across-the-board reduction in all serious crimes. Many are suggesting that is the initiative of the neighborhood policing initiatives that the city has undertaken, which seem to be taking root, and Chief Scott Baker is cautiously optimistic. However, as we discussed with Chief Baker on the Maryland Crabs podcast, sometimes it's difficult to look at percentages and numbers because one or two incidents can swing it very far in the other direction. Two hotels within two days. Yesterday, the Westin Annapolis was sold to a Texas investment firm, and today the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel, formerly known as the Marriott Waterfront, was sold to a Philadelphia-based investment firm. The company involved today is Hersha Hospitality Trust, and they purchased the 150-room property for $41.5 million. Now, the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel was converted to an autograph collection hotel in 2015 from being a Marriott. It has 15,000 square feet of function space, which includes their outdoor dock as well as pussers. Hersha Hospitality Trust does own 49 other hotels, including the Ritz-Carlton in Georgetown. That's about it for the news today. Hang tight. It is Thursday. That means we have Trevor with your Maker's Minute. And, of course, we have George Young with that still very weird forecast coming up for the next few days and through the weekend. But first, as always, Sean O'Neill with RBC Wealth Management. I'm Sean O'Neill, your local RBC Wealth Management Advisor. More than likely, the primary reason you save and invest is to achieve your life goals while ensuring your long-term financial well-being. But before you can determine your preparedness towards your goals, you need long-term answers to important questions about how much money you need, where it will come from, and how long it will last. RBC Wealth Plan, a new industry-leading tool, is now available to help answer these questions and develop your personal plan using a conversational approach. With RBC Wealth Plan, we can create a personal analysis based on these unique goals while offering you the ability to weigh certain decisions and determine what's best for you and your family. Call me, Sean O'Neill, today at 410-573-6723 for a complimentary consultation. RBC Wealth Management, a division of RBC Capital Markets, LLC. Member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. 
This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, April 5th. Wow, what a day yesterday was. We never got any real thunderstorms, but everything else was as expected with warm temps early, followed by much cooler temps in the late afternoon, and of course, very strong winds for several hours in the afternoon and evening hours. If 2018 goes down in the record books for anything, it might just be for the wind that we've had in the Annapolis area since early March. And today and tomorrow will remain breezy as well, with sun and cool temps today in the 50s, followed by 60s on Friday, before we get a real nasty dose of cold air Saturday through at least Monday, with highs only in the 40s each day and maybe only in the 30s on Saturday. And yes, the big talk of the town that is becoming slightly bigger each day now is possible snow on Saturday. Stay tuned for updates on that throughout the day today, as we should have our official one and only one snowfall forecast by 8 p.m. tonight. Okay, that's it for us today. Be sure to download our free app by searching your app store for DC MDVA weather, and also follow us on Facebook or Twitter or on our website at dmvweather.com. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Enjoy the next two days while we have 50s and 60s and a little bit of sunshine to go along with it because we'll take a few big steps backwards over the weekend and into next week. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Hi, this is Randy. And Claudia Boldiga. Please join us and our presenting sponsor, RXNT, on Saturday, April 28th, on AAMC's South Campus for Denim and Diamonds Bash. Proceeds will benefit mental health and addiction services in our community. Now more than ever, we need to focus on this critical need. The bash sold out last year, so don't delay and join us for this fabulous night under the stars. Can't make the party? You can still help by purchasing a raffle ticket. This year's raffle is a stunning four-piece amethyst jewelry collection donated by Cezanne Jewelers, valued at $5,000. Only 100 tickets will be sold for the raffle, so don't miss out. For event or raffle tickets, go to aamcdenimanddiamonds.org. Thanks for your support of Anne Arundel Medical Center's efforts to improve the availability of mental health and addiction services throughout our community. Remember, it's not just a party. It's a party with a purpose. This is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Tomorrow from 7.30 to 9 p.m. in Owings Mills, the Irvine Nature Center is having a family night hike. It's a twilight stroll where you'll identify frogs by sight and sound. Bring a flashlight with a red lens. Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Edgewater, Hawks Yachts at Liberty Marina is having their second annual nautical flea market. Seems like a good place to find some really interesting things that you can upcycle and make into new stuff. Also on Saturday from 10.30 to noon in Ellicott City at Benjamin Banneker Historical Park and Museum is Foraging for Wild Edibles. Learn to identify what's edible and what isn't in the surrounding area. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday in St. Michael's is the Eastern Shore Sea Glass and Coastal Arts Festival. Also Saturday and Sunday at the D.C. Convention Center is the 5th Annual USA Science and Engineering Festival. It's a free two-day expo featuring 3,000 hands-on exhibits, stage shows, and much more from the world's leading scientific and engineering groups. Perfect for children, teens, and families who want to inspire curious minds. On Monday at 3.45 p.m. at the Edgewater Library is Middle School STEM. STEM activities including engineering challenges, learning to code, and VR experiences. Monday at 7 p.m. at the Eastport Annapolis Net Library is Star Party. Explore the night sky with Glenn Bach of the Goddard Space Center. Learn about constellations, star clusters, and galaxies, and view them through a telescope. This is an outdoor activity, so dress appropriately for the weather. Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. at the Odenton Library is Steam Tuesdays. Wednesday at 4 p.m. at the Broadneck Library is Catapult Challenge, building catapults using popsicle sticks and rubber bands. Also Wednesday at 4 p.m. at the Crofton Library this time is the Nature Explorers Club. Get a close-up look at a piece of your planet. Each month they investigate an aspect of the ecosystem through presentations, conversations, and hands-on activities. And finally on Wednesday at 7 p.m. at the Deal Library is SoCo Grow. This month they're doing oyster gardening, boosting oyster populations in your own backyard. 
A big congratulations to another successful launch of SpaceX's Falcon 9, and their Dragon is on the way to the International Space Station. Tonight at Annapolis Makerspace is Basics of Electronics with Tom. If you want to support Annapolis Makerspace and aren't ready to become a full member, you can always support us by shopping Amazon through the banner at makeannapolis.org. It costs you nothing extra, and we get a small kickback from each sale. Simply go to makeannapolis.org and click on the Amazon banner on the right before shopping. You can even bookmark the page to make it easy for next time. You can catch me tonight and every Thursday night at Annapolis Makerspace space on Hudson Street. I'll be posting links to these events on the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org sometime today. And whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.